Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing the adventure, Adventures of the Maelstrom Pokemon. All credit for this story goes to the talented author, whose details you can find in the description below. If you want to follow along, there's a link provided. We'll be covering chapters 27 through 29 in this session. And hey, don't forget to show some love by hitting that like button and dropping a comment. Your engagement really helps with the algorithm, and it means a lot to us. Alright, let's dive right into the story. At a small frozen snowy countryside where a small tribe currently resides, a man with half of his hair black and the other white is dressed in a tundra traveling outfit whilst accompanied by his gothitelle. At the moment he's having a conversation with a resident of the tribe who is packing a bag onto his snow sled harnessed onto a stoutland. It's useless not matter how often you ask, said the tribesman. The people of the Vale have a place. A place where they're meant to live, the other man. But Damon, that's only just a legend, so why don't you leave? The now named Damon remained firm. I won't. I want to see Glacine, the village chief. Elsewhere are a group of bear ticks sparring, and unknown to them are a woman and a young boy accompanied by a lillipup who is currently sniffing the ground as it searched for something before digging through the snow to unearth a revival herb. Look, Mom, we found it, said the boy excitedly. The woman raised a finger to her lips to shush the boy. Please, keep your voice down. Sorry, Mom, the bear tick haven't hurt us. However, you did a good job finding it. They'll be thrilled to have this. The boy scooped lillipup up in his arms. Great job, Lillipup. The puppy Pokemon happily responded to the compliment by licking his face. Suddenly, the ground shook violently, and they turned to see that an iceberg just crashed into the icy shore, causing the bear tick to flee in confusion. The boy accidentally tumbled off the ledge to the ground below, and the woman jumped down and grabbed his hand to lead him and Lillipup away from the breaking ice. Up above was the tribesman and Stoutland pulling his sled along as they rushed down to help them. The tribesman called out to them, Glacine, over here, said woman and her son quickly ran over to climb onto the sled. However, one of the feeling bear ticks slammed into the Stoutland, knocking them all off as the ice cracked all around them with no way of escape. They all looked up only to be horrified upon seeing a massive glacier heading straight towards them. The glacier made contact and the group were knocked off their feet and Lillipup slipped out of the boy's grip and almost fell into the freezing lake when it was engulfed in a red aura and hovered in the air before floating back into the boys. Apparently, it was a gothitelle using confusion as it floated towards them. Suddenly, something else flew up to them as well. It is a large black bipedal draconic Pokemon with piercing red eyes and dark gray to black skin, with some parts appearing more armor-like. It possesses a pair of short wings on its back whilst the lower length of the arms resemble that of web-like features with three clawed dark colored hands on the undersides. And its tail is that of a large round conical formation resembling that of an electricity generator. Someone happened to have been riding on the Pokemon's back as he jumped off to land before the group, revealing who he is. Damon. Glacine looked at said in surprise. Damon thrust an arm forward as purple energy begins to form in front of its forehead and grew larger to shape into a ball of shining blue energy. Who is that Pokemon? asked the boy. The tribesman took a step back as he began to recognize the Pokemon. Could it be? The Pokemon charged straight at the glacier and rammed into it with great force, pushing it back. The tail began to glow light blue with electricity as the Pokemon's body becomes surrounded in a sphere of violet electricity before flying at the glacier and slamming into it, this time shattering it into many pieces as everyone looked on in wonder. It's the legendary Pokemon Izegrim, said Glacine. Damon turned towards them. Please, Glacine, listen to what I have to tell you one more time. The people of the Vale must now reclaim their bond with the land. The other members of the tribe were nearby and looked in wonder as Zegrim descended before them. To their shock, the legendary Pokemon actually spoke beyond hope. You will find your ideals. Then it flew upwards, piercing through the dark clouds for the sun's rays to shine through. Back to the present, Ash and the gang were currently trekking through the forest pathway when they heard a screech of a bird Pokemon and looked up to see which one it is. Hey look, it's a Mandibuzz, said Ash. It's certainly been a while since we last saw one, said Naruto looking as well. Iris turned towards Sillin. Are we there yet? Not yet, Iris, but we should be able to see it fairly soon once we exit from the forest. Sillin looked up from his electronic map to respond. Naruto and Ash ran ahead of them towards the exit of the forest and stopped to stare in awe of what laid out before them. Naruto turned to call out to the others. Hey guys, come and check this out. Iris and Sillin soon caught up, and they too were stunned. Is that it? asked Iris. Sillin nodded in affirmation, is. Before the group is a tall mountain where they can see a large town situated along the mountain ridge, and further ahead of it is a massive castle, which seems to resemble that of a sword's hilt from one's perspective. That has to be Eindok Town, which Alessa was talking about, said Naruto. Indeed, let's hurry over so we can sign up for the tournament, said Sillin. Ash nodded in agreement. That's right, let's get moving. With that said, the group began their gradual climb along the ascending mountain pathway to the top. They putting up quite a distance when Naruto suddenly picked up two emotions of terror up above them. 
triggering him to quickly dash up the pathway, much to the confusion of the others. Hey Naruto, where are you going? Asked Ash who began to run after him with Pikachu riding on his shoulder. There's someone in trouble up ahead of us. Naruto replied, causing Ash's eyes to widen in surprise before narrowing with determination. Then we're coming too. Yeah, said Pikachu. They quickly ascended to a certain point where they saw a pair of deerling in their summer forms at the edge of a cliff a bit further from them. However, one of them was dangling over the edge of the cliff while the other is struggling to pull it back up by grabbing the tail with its mouth but slowly failing at doing so. They're going to fall at this rate. Naruto channeled Chakra to his feet and quickly jumped a stick to the cliff wall before beginning his approach. I'm coming too. Ash took off his backpack and began to shuffle along the ledge with his back to the wall so as to follow. No, Ash, it's too dangerous. Naruto protested. I don't care. They need help and we're going to give it to them. Naruto was taken aback. He kept on forgetting that he and Ash are so alike that it's almost as if they were twin brothers. He let out a sigh and before smiling in response. All right, Ash, let's go, but be careful. The duo quickly made their way over to the deerling, just in time as they all began to fall. Ash reached out to wrap an arm on one while Naruto used his tails to grab the other. However, things started to go wrong as the rock underneath Ash's feet crumbled, causing him to lose his balance. Naruto grabbed Ash's hood with his teeth and tried to pull him back. Suddenly, he and Kurama sensed a surge of energy flowing into Ash much to their confusion. That momentary lapse cost them as the ledge crumbled completely with Ash skidding down the cliffside and dragging Naruto along. Ash, Naruto, Silen and Iris had already caught up and were horrified upon seeing what was happening before them. Naruto gritted his teeth as he tried to stop them, but the additional weights was making it a difficult task. Come on, come on, come on. He began to panic upon seeing them draw close to the edge. Then in one crazy moment, Ash actually jumped, but it wasn't the action that surprised Naruto and Kurama. Rather, it's the result. They went flying about a hundred feet into the air and came landing on top of a far cliff from where they were before. Did you just see what I saw? Asked Iris in disbelief, getting a silent nod from Silen. Thank you for saving us, said the deerling after Naruto and Ash placed them on the ground. You're welcome. Naruto turned to question Ash. How did you do that? As far I can remember, you never jumped that far before. I don't know how I did it either, said Ash truthfully. I think someone transferred power to him earlier before. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to do so, said Kurama. And we weren't sensing for anything at that time too. It must be a Pokemon, thought Naruto. Hey guys, how are you going to get out of there? Iris called out to them while Silen picked up Ash's backpack. The duo looked around before discovering a tunnel right behind them and went to examine it, then Ash replied back to them. There's a breeze coming through here, we'll follow it out and meet you on the other side, said Ash. Come on guys, Naruto spoke up as he and Ash walked into the tunnel with the deerling obediently following them. The group walked through the winding tunnel until they arrived at a juncture where many more tunnels laid before them, potentially leading to different directions. Okay, now which tunnel should we go through? Taking the wrong one might get us lost. What do you think, Ash? Ash was about to answer when he suddenly stiffened in surprise, though Naruto hadn't noticed before he finally spoke to them, follow me. He jogged through the tunnel with the others soon following him. Naruto and Kurama began to notice that when Ash led them through the tunnels, he didn't spend so much as a second at the junctions when they run across them. Don't you think it's kind of weird for Ash to be able to navigate through these tunnels, especially since it's the first time we came here, thought Naruto. Indeed, I suspect an outside influence at work, said Kurama. Think it's that mystery Pokemon from earlier before. It's highly likely, but we don't sense any negativity of sorts, then it's not an enemy. Got it? Naruto snapped back into focus right as they exited from the current tunnel to step out onto a massively large area with giant crystalline rocks forming a network of sorts around them. Whoa, I've never seen anything like this before in my whole life. Pikachu nodded in agreement. Me too. Hey, anybody hear me? Hello? Ash called out with his voice echoing throughout the cavern, but received no response whatsoever. Unknown to them, something reacted to their presence and unleashed a ripple of energy which rose from the bottom of the cave and rose to the top whilst illuminating the area much to the surprise of the group. What was that? I don't know for sure, it just emitted power for a moment, and now I can't sense it, Naruto replied. Ash was about to say more when he stiffened again with Naruto, noticing it this time again. What do you mean, Ash? Asked Naruto, already suspecting what just happened. I've been getting some kind of visions in my mind, which is showing which way for us to go. Sounds like a psychic type Pokemon to me, said Pikachu thoughtfully. Well, that sounds pretty helpful. Let's keep going. So lead the way, said Naruto. Got it. Ash moved ahead of the others as they followed him along the crystal pathway upwards till they went through a tunnel up to a spiraling staircase which led them up to a wall. Ash pushed the wall to find that it rotated for an opening into a cellar of sorts with a door serving as the exit. Outside, Silen and Iris were quickly making their way up the mountain path in hopes of reuniting with Naruto and the others when they heard a familiar voice call out to them from above. They looked up to see Ash, Naruto, 
and Pikachu looking down at them from the castle balcony. Iris, Cillin, you gotta come up here and check out the view, said Ash happily. Yeah, pick up the pace, you slowpokes, Naruto added with a smirk. And to think we were worried, said Cillin. What kids, said Iris. Later on, they made their way up to the castle and met up with the rest before saying their goodbyes to the dearling pair as they left. So what's to know about this place, Cillin? asked Naruto curiously. This castle is called the Sword of the Veil, Cillin replied. Sword of the Veil, asked Ash. Well, it certainly looks like a sword, said Naruto. Look over there. Cillin pointed out for the others to look as they saw a barren-looking valley visible in the distance to the mountaintop. They say it flew through the air from that valley and landed right here in this very spot. Iris, Ash, and Naruto were surprised to hear that, and Iris voiced out her disbelief flew through the air. How can a castle fly? asked Ash. It's just a legend. It's impossible to know if it's really the truth, said Cillin, then he pointed again, this time downwards for them to see a large grove of trees bearing fruit. But look as you can see that the fruits in the orchards are both beautiful and delicious. I could go for some right about now. Ash looked at the fruits with hunger. Me too. Pikachu mirrored his best friend's intentions. You guys aren't the only ones, Naruto chipped in. Don't tell me you guys are hungry again, asked Iris. In case you haven't, but we're always hungry, and that's that. Ash replied with gusto. Not to mention we have a high metabolism, said Naruto in agreement. Both of their stomachs rumbled loudly as if to testify to their statement. Iris sighed. Oh, why did I even ask? Cillin strode forward with a small basket in hand. Then I've just got the thing, my homemade macaroons. He opened it to reveal small chewy cookies of different colors. Awesome. Ash gingerly reached out to take a couple of them, whilst giving some to Pikachu and Naruto to have some. Thanks, Cillin. Naruto popped one into his mouth and ate cheerfully. You're welcome. Now let's head on over to the town below, said Cillin. The group began making their way through the hallways of the castle. Naruto was admiring the sight of place, seeing as it is quite different compared to the buildings back in the elemental nations. Suddenly, he heard Ash yelp in surprise, and turned to see him looked at his empty hand in shock. What's up? asked Naruto. I was just holding a macaroon a couple seconds ago, and now it's gone. Ash replied. Iris deadpanned at this, knowing you, you probably just ate it earlier. Of course I didn't, and besides, Ash took out another macaroon with a smirk. I still got one left. Uh, what a kid? Iris shook her head as she walked away with Ash and Naruto laughing. Well, down the hatch, huh? Ash was about to eat it, only to find it gone too. Naruto quirked an eyebrow in surprise, then his ears picked up the sounds of someone eating something crunchy. You don't suppose that it's the mystery Pokemon that's been snatching the macaroons from Ash? It seems to possess the ability to become invisible, an interesting on at that, said Kurama thoughtfully. Well, not for Ash, that's for sure, Naruto mumbled. Suddenly they heard the sound of fireworks from the outside. The festival is starting. Then let's go. Silen took off with the rest quickly following him from behind, though Ash lagged behind a bit before catching up to them. They descended through a few stairs but were nowhere close to their destination. Let's see now. Which way should we go? Quick. If we don't hurry, we won't be able to register for the competition, said Iris worriedly. I can take you. They all turned to see a man with black and white hair climb down a staircase before them. Over here, if you're in a rush. This way is much faster. Thanks for the help. My name is Ash and I'm working to become a Pokemon master. These are my partners Pikachu and Tokala, said Ash as said Pokemon greeted him. My name is Iris, and this is Aksu. I'm training to be a Dragon Master, said Iris. My name is Silin, and I'm a Pokemon connoisseur. Silin introduced himself. The man then introduced himself. My name is Damon, and I've been working on restoring this castle. Please follow me. He led them out of the castle and into the town where they were able to locate the place meant for the registration for the competition before making the decision to go exploring. They were walking along the street when they saw a giant bipedal Pokemon resembling that of a suit of armor and it happened to be pulling a cart with a woman walked alongside it. It's a Gallarc, said Cillin. And it's huge, said Ash. Pointing out the obvious, Ash said Naruto. But what's it pulling? Asked Iris curiously. Why don't we go and find out, said Cillin. They all ran after the cart, not noticing the hanging lamppost suddenly jerk around as if something had bumped into it and quickly caught up with the cart to see an assortment of souvenirs and goods which seemed to center around a Pokemon with a round face and long triangular ears. Oh, they look so cute, said Iris. They're Victini dolls, the Victory Pokemon. A woman, probably the owner of the cart, spoke up while walking towards them. Victini, Iris, and the others looked at the woman in curiosity. That's right, they say it's lived in this town long ago. Wow, I want to meet it, said Ash with Naruto and Pikachu nodding in agreement. Naruto may have met Arceus, but he would certainly like to meet with other legendary Pokemon. Very few have ever seen Victini, said the woman, causing Ash to feel a bit let down. It is said to give people and Pokemon power, power. That's right, long ago it was said to have protected the Sword of the Veil. Really? That sounds awesome. 
Iris pointed at one of the small wooden Victini charm. I'll take one of these, please. The woman took one off and gave it to her. Here you go. And one day, may you receive Victini's power as well. Now I know I'm going to win the battle competition, said Iris excitedly. We'll see about that, said Naruto with a smirk. Later on, they made their way to the town square, where there are already all people gathered there, both residing in the town and tourists. There was a large stage set up with baskets of fruits and berries all on display, as an elderly man stood with a microphone in front of him with a trio of Pokemon which Ash scanned with his Pokedex to be clink, clang and clink clang were hovering overhead. The man began to speak for everyone to hear ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads, girls and boys, and of course Pokemon. I welcome you all to the Eindok Harvest Festival. My name is Mans, the mayor of Eindok Town. Folks, I'm happy to report that our orchards have given us a bountiful harvest this year. So festival fans, are we having fun? The crowd cheered out loudly in response to the question with Ash and the gang joining, which is kind of hard not to give in the excitement all around them. All right, then it's time to kick off what you've all been waiting for, our annual battle competition. The Pokemon trio flew over to a large instrumental machine and inserted themselves into the customized slots constructed before spinning as the machine began to play music. Here are simple competition rules. Trainers who have gathered here and wish to participate will have a one-on-one -on -one Pokemon battle with no substitutions. Then Mans held up a wooden necklace with a design resembling the castle on it. Whoever holds the competition necklace until the end wins. All right, let the battle begin. At his words, the competitors took off in random directions for a battle. Just watch me win. Iris took out a poke ball and tossed it into the air. Cillin was quick to follow suit. Watch me win. Iris's Pokeball opened to release Amalga, who waved happily at Naruto, while Silen's Pokemon released his Panzage as well. We're gonna win, right guys? Ash asked his partners. Yeah. Pikachu nodded in affirmation. You know it, said Naruto with a look of excitement. Scraggy and Cub Chew, come on out. Ash took out two Pokeballs and opened them to bring out said Pokemon who turned to him. All right, you two. I want you both to watch all the other Pokemon when they battle so you can learn more about it. Okay. Cub Chew nodded in understanding. Right. Scraggy pulled up his pants to prevent them from falling down. Then let's go. Ash ran off down the street. Right behind you. Naruto used his tails to pick up Scraggy and Cub Chew to place them on his back before running after Ash and Pikachu while Iris and Cillin went elsewhere with her Pokemon. It's always hard. When your journey begins. Hard to find your way. Hard to make amends. But there's nothing you can't do. Cause you got the power inside of you. Ash faced off against a trainer by the name by the name Mako who brings out Superior, which is the fully evolved form over Snivy to battle against Pikachu. The serpentine Pokemon quickly slithered towards Pikachu, who leapt out of the way to land on a slanted wall, before jumping off to avoid his opponent back to the ground. Mako ordered for a vine whip attack from her Superior. Pikachu was quick to dodge the incoming vines and was commanded to use Iron Tail to destroy an energy ball, which was fired at him, resulting in a cloud of smoke. Ash switched to the offensive as he commanded Pikachu to use Volt Tackle, as his partner slammed into the superior with a high-speed electric tackle, which knocked it out to earn them the win with Scraggy and Cub Chew cheering happily while Naruto nodded in approval. It's never easy to make a choice, to keep things inside, or raise your voice. But for everyone there comes a time when the light inside begins to shine. In another part of town, Iris and Amalgo were currently facing against a trainer by the name Tatsuki with his Embor that is the fully evolved form of Tepic. Amalga swooped towards Embor, whilst evading the flamethrower fired at her, before landing on its head and stomping on it several times before gliding away. Tatsuki ordered for another flamethrower to which his Embor complied and almost hit Amalga, although she scrambled out of the way in a panic, causing her to use Volt Switch before Iris could stop her. This had her switching places with Excadrill, who looked ready to battle. However, the competition rules resulted in Tatsuki earning the win. Iris glumly handed over the wooden necklace over to the referee, before turning to glare at Amalga for their loss said Pokemon flinched and made a cute face, hoping to be forgiven. It's not always right or wrong. As long as your spirit's strong. It's always win or lose. It's the road you choose. The answer's within. It's not always black and white. But your heart always knows what's right. Let the journey begin. Iris went over to meet up with Cillin and find him in Panzage facing off against a trainer called Carlita with a Pokemon which Iris instantly identifies as Hydreigon, which is a dragon type much to her excitement. Cillin and Panzage turned towards Iris with deadpan expressions for distracting them, to which she chuckled sheepishly before pointing ahead to alert them of an incoming attack. Carlita ordered her Hydreigon use Dragon Breath as it unleashed a powerful blast which instantly took out Panzage with one hit with Cillin, only having to accept his loss as well. So many choices. How do we know? So many places. Where do we go? What should I say? What should I do? Still, we're together, me and you. It's not always right or wrong. 
As long as your spirit's strong, it's always win or lose. It's the road you choose. The answer's within. In another part of town, Oshawa came running down a flight of stairs whilst avoiding a flamethrower from behind to stand ready at the street below with him bore soon following after him and stood a fair distance away. Ash and the others along with Tatsuki ran to stand behind their respective Pokemon whilst Iris and Silen soon caught up to them. Tatsuki ordered for a flame charge and Ash quickly told Oshawa to use Aqua Jet while spinning to double the power. Both Pokemon raced towards each other with their attacks before clashing in the middle, which resulted in a large cloud of steam. It's not always black and white but your heart always knows what's right. Let the journey begin. Pokemon. The steam eventually cleared to Embor stumbling back a few times before falling down with swirls in its eyes whilst Oshawott remained standing. Upon the referee announcing their victory, Ash and Oshawott along with the others were cheering happily as Cub Chu was jumping for joy and Scraggy was swinging his pants to and fro before doing a HI5 with someone, but it was most certainly not Cub Chu much to his confusion. There's nothing you can't do. Cause you got the power inside of you. It's not always right or wrong. As long as your spirit's strong, it's always win or lose. It's the road you choose. The answer's within. Then Ash took off with Iris and Silen in search of his next opponent as Naruto scooped Cub Chu and a still confused Scraggy to which Naruto quirked an eyebrow at in curiosity before placing them back on his back and running after the others, failing to notice yet another hanging lamppost being suddenly jerking sideways. But a little girl did although her mother paid it no mind. It's not always black and white. But your heart always knows what's right. Let the journey begin. Pokemon. The group eventually found Ash's opponent who goes by the name Liku over at the town square as his next opponent. The lady of the Victini souvenir cart had her shiny gallar carry it over and park it nearby before seating herself on a stool to watch the upcoming battle. Good luck to the both of you, said the woman cheerfully. Ash nodded in affirmation but taking out a pokeball, go pokeball. He tossed it into the air to bring out a Pokemon. It was a dark orange tortoise-like Pokemon with a large black rock-like shell with holes that glow with a red warmth. The Pokemon blew out smoke from his nostrils and the top of his shell with the sound of a locomotive horn. That must be another one of Ash's old Pokemon, a Torkoal to be exact. I can tell it has a spicy flavor, said Sillin. I can't wait to see how strong it can be, said Iris. Do your best, Torkoal. Pikachu cheered out loud. Lika tossed his Pokeball to bring out what appears to be the fully evolved form of Oshawott, which is a Samurai, causing the others to worry about Ash a bit. This looks bad, Torkoal is a fire type which has a disadvantage against Samurai which is a water type, said Iris worriedly. This might leave a bitter aftertaste in Ash's mouth, said Sillin. Don't worry about it Torkoal, I know we can win this, said Ash assuredly. Torkoal nodded in confidence and turned to face his opponent. Now use flamethrower, Torkoal opened his mouth to unleash a stream of fire at the Samurai. Dodge it Samurai, and then use water gun. Liku called out quickly. The water Pokemon quickly darted to one side and launched a stream of water. Quick, use iron defense, said Ash. Torkoal quickly withdrew into his shell and was slowly being pushed back but held strong until the attack finally dissipated before coming looking a bit damaged. Now use body slam. Torkoal complied and leapt high into the air before coming straight down at. Use razor shell to knock it away. Lika called out. Samurot reached across to pull out one of its scimitars from its forearm as it glowed with blue energy and elongated before slashing at Torkoal to send it flying back and skidding right next to the cart. Oh my word, said the woman, looking surprised. That's bad, Torkoal may have toughed out the water gun, but that razor shell did a lot of damage, said Silen. Ash and Naruto were about to go and check on Torkoal when he suddenly shot up to his feet and came running to stand in front of them. Naruto sensed a foreign energy coursing through him, and the signature is similar to the one which flowed through Ash back at the cliff. Torkoal, are you okay? Ash asked worriedly. I am now. Torkoal breathed out smoke and affirmation. All right then, let's turn this around with overheat. At Ash's command. Torkoal's body turned bright red and opened his mouth which glowed white before unleashing massive white flame that has a red-orange flame spiraling around it at the Samurai, engulfing it in flames much to the shock of everyone present. Flames died down to reveal a scorched water Pokemon lying on the ground knocked. Samurai is unable to battle, Torkoal wins, the referee announced. Wow, Torkoal we won. Ash cheered happily. Way to go, said Kuchu. I can't believe I won. I'm so happy. Torkoal started crying in joy. Whoa, I never knew Torkoal had that much power. Iris was stunned at the sight of the attack. Quite unexpected, Silen was in agreement. Naruto, however, was silent. Karama, come up with a theory yet? I have, everything so far points out that it is Victini who has been helping us out since the cliff and following us around as well. Not to mention the ability to enhance one's abilities which we saw twice so far, said Karama. I really want to meet it now more than ever. You're not the only one. Close by was Carlita who was watching the battle from the very beginning. 
and had come to notice something strange about the trainer's Pokemon, and so walked up next to the cart and spoke to the owner. Hey mother, that Torkoal powered up quite suddenly, right? Yes, it did, said the woman who is apparently her mother. Do you think that it could have been the work of Victini? Come on now, Carlita dear. No one has ever seen Victini for a long time. I'm sure they won because he trained his Torkoal so well. Carlita wasn't swayed in the least bit. Something definitely happened during the battle, and it had to do with Victini, and she's going to get to the bottom of this puzzle. Ash and the gang were currently resting under the shade of the trees in the playground after their recent battle, before heading out to engage his next opponent. However, it seems that he wouldn't be resting for long as he was challenged by none other than Carlita herself, along with her Hydreigon, and a referee was nearby to observe and judge. Ash stood before her with a look of excitement. I never turned down a challenge, so let's do it. He took out a poke ball and was ready to throw it. Scraggy pulled up his pants. Let me at him. I can't beat him. He ran forward to hit the Pokemon with a head, but when a tail wrapped around him and was lifted into the air to face Naruto. Oh no, you don't, Scraggy. You can't fight that Pokemon, said Naruto. Why not? Asked Scraggy. Because you're still not ready yet, plus none of your moves will be able to do much damage anyways, Naruto explained. And it looks like Ash has someone in mind to use for this battle. Go, Poke Ball. Ash tossed the Poke Ball in the air for it to open and unleash a Pokemon before him. It is a small bipedal, dragon-like Pokemon that is primarily blue. It has a big mouth filled with sharp teeth, no neck, and arms that start at the outer edges of its jaws. A red underbelly stretches from its abdomen to the bottom of its jaw. It also has two horns that resemble jet engines, each with a light blue stripe in the middle. It has a single light blue stripe wrapping around its back, and on top of its head is a dorsal fin, which has a notch on it for the male. Iris let out a squeal. Oh my goodness, it's a jibble. It's so cute. Looks like Ash brought back another one of his older Pokemon, though I express worry on the tight matchups between those two Pokemon, said Cillin. The referee raised both flags into the air battle begin. Hydreigon, use Dragon Breath. Carlita commanded for her Pokemon to open its mouth and spew a stream of purple flames at its target. Ash quickly reacted Jibble, dodge by using Dig. Jibble then burrowed to the ground before the flames could hit him. Now come out and use Rock Smash. Jibble burst out of the ground in front of Hydreigon, with a glowing fist reared back before punching it hard in the face for a super effective hit. Shake it off and use payback, said Carlita. Hydreigon recovered from the attack, then its body emitted a black aura as it quickly flew at Jibble and slammed into him with a full body tackle to send and knocking him back. Don't give in Jibble, use Dragon Pulse, said Ash. Jibble complied with a command and opened its mouth to fire a large cyan energy orb at the Hydreigon. Quick, dodge it and use Tri-Attack, said Carlita. Hydreigon rapidly ascended then opened all three of its mouths to concentrate orbs of electricity, fire and ice from them before firing it in a triangular formation. Get out of the way, Jibble. Ash called out in a panic. Jibble attempted to jump back to evade, but the explosion from the attack sent him flying into the bushes much to the worry of Ash and the others. Naruto got up to go and check on him when he sensed a now familiar surge of energy and realized what's happening again. Jibble came rushing out of the bushes looking very hyper. Are you okay? Yeah. Jibble responded and looked ready to do just about anything. All right, then use Dragon Pulse, said Ash. Jibble opened his mouth to fire another Cyan Energy Orb, but this one was twice as large as the first one. The Draconic Projectile rushed to slam into Hydreigon, with the impact powerful enough to send it crashing into the wall behind Carlita, and sending the match in Ash's favor, we won. He laughed when Jibble playfully chomped on his head before returning him to his Pokeball. Way to go, Ash and Jibble. Pikachu chia hapili. Yay. Cubchu and Scraggy were just as happy. Wow, Ash's Jibble is strong too, said Iris in wonder. That last serving was extremely spicy, said Sillin. Man, those power boosts of Victini's kind of feels like cheating in a way, thought Naruto. Pretty much that, said Kurama, and it seems that she must have noticed too. Huh. Naruto snapped back into attention to see Carlita approaching them after returning her Hydreigon to its Pokeball with a serious look on her face. I think you're right, buddy. That was the work of Victini, right? Asked Carlita. Ash and the others sans Naruto were confused at her question with the former asking back, Victini, what are you talking about? Asked Sillin confusedly. I saw it. The way your jibble was getting power from Victini. You mean this? Iris held out the wooden Victini charm which she had bought earlier. It didn't do anything, really. Carlita shook her head at that. That's not it. I meant the real Victini. The real one's here. Asked Ash. Where is it? Asked Iris. Victini is invisible now. It has the ability to. Carlita explained. Ash thought deeply about that then came to a realization after recalling the earlier incidents. So it was Victini who ate my macaroon, and it must have been its voice that I heard back in the caves too. Actually, I was sensing Victini too at those times, but I couldn't exactly pinpoint its location then. But now I can guess that it has been following us around this whole time. Naruto spoke up. Ash stepped forward and called out in a loud voice, Victini, was it you who gave me power to save those two, dearling, before? 
It was silent for a few moments, then a voice echoed throughout the area. That I did. Naruto and the Pokemon could understand what Victini was saying, but Ash and Co. could only hear it chanting parts of its name. Hey, Victini, is that you? If it is, come on out and say hi, said Ash excitedly. Cillin had an idea and ran over to his backpack under the tree and returned with a small basket containing the macaroons. I still got some of the macaroons left. Good idea, Cillin. Victini seemed to really like these. Ash took out an orange macaroon and held it out. Hey, Victini, I've got more macaroons. Really? In a matter of seconds, the macaroon was taken and everyone could see it being rapidly eaten as something landed on the side of a seesaw then revealed itself to the group. It is a small, rabbit-like Pokemon with large, pointed ears which form the letter V. It has large, blue eyes and a round, cream head, which is comparatively large compared to its small, cream body, while the tops of its ears, crest, and extremities are all orange. Its bulbous arms and legs are rounded to make a sort of cuff, before ending with small, three-fingered hands and two-toed feet. It has two pointed teeth that can be seen on its upper jaw. It also has two cream wing-like tails, which allows it to fly. So, that's Victini, said Naruto as he looked at said Pokemon with interest. Wow, so it really does exist, said Iris in wonder, but then Victini went invisible again. Ash held out another macaroon for Victini to appear, but then it hesitated and went invisible again. The raven-haired trainer then had a look of mischief and made the intention of eating only for Victini to reappear in a pleading manner for him not to do so. Please don't eat it, said Victini worriedly. It was close to his mouth when Ash stopped and held a macaroon out with a playful wink and gestured for it to take. Victini looked to make sure before happily taking the cookie and eating it. To think Victini appeared for a macaroon, said Carlita. It's to be expected if you really like a certain food, said Naruto. Kinda ironic coming from you, said Iris slyly. No comment. Ash then introduced himself. Hi, my name is Ash, and these are my buddies Pikachu, Tokala, Cubchu, and Scraggy. Hi, said Pikachu, cheerfully. Naruto waved a tail in greeting. Yo. Hello, said Scraggy and Cubchu, waving at Victini. I'm Iris, and this is Aksu said Iris with Aksu saying hello, also. My name is Sillin, pleased to meet you, said Sillin with a bow. My name's Carlita, it's great to finally meet you, said Carlita. Victini, is it true that Torquil and Jibble got stronger because of your power? asked Ash curiously. That's right, Victini nodded in affirmation. Gee, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Hey, let's have some fun, said Victini. Sure, we're up it, said Ash excitedly. Apparently the other Pokemon wanted to play too. Soon they were all running down the street with Victini riding atop Ash's head while Naruto was running alongside them with Scraggy and Axa riding on his back as usual. Carlita, Sillin, and Iris were following them from behind. The group were running along the dirt path close to the outskirts of town. Victini looked up and saw something which began to make it feel rather nervous and apparently Naruto had sensed the emotion emanating from it. Hey Victini, what's the matter? He followed Victini's gaze to see a large stone pillar with strange markings on it. He was about to inquire on it when Ash passed by and grabbed Victini's to pull him along. Come this way, Victini, said Ash. Ash, wait. Naruto called out. Then the next everyone knew. A purple translucent barrier with mystical runes suddenly appeared and it knocked back only Victini much to everyone's confusion. What was that? Some sort of barrier? Victini then began emitting a fiery aura then it launched a fireball straight at Ash. Naruto's eyes widened in shock and was about to perform a substitution when the fireball made contact with the barrier again. And this time, everyone noticed that the markings on the tall pillar and possibly others were glowing purple too. So those pillars are what form the barrier? Victini. Ash called out to the Pokemon who appeared to be very distressed at the sight of the barrier. He raised a hand to calm, but Victini saw him approach and panicked. Don't come closer. Then Victini flew away whilst turning invisible. What just happened? Asked Iris. I don't really know, said Sillin. I'm guessing that those pillars were looking at form some of force field which prevents Victini from going beyond it. But the question is why? said Naruto with a frown. It bears similarities to Fuinjutsu at a certain point, said Kurama. Perhaps my mother would have an idea about it. She knows more about this town's history than I do, said Carlita. Let's go ask her, then we'll look for Victini, said Ash. The group made their back to the town square, where Carlita introduced them to the woman, who was the owner of the souvenir cart, and the shiny Gollark is her mother whose name is Juanita. Then they told her about Victini, and she was quite surprised at that. You say that you saw Victini? asked Juanita. Yes, mom, we really did, but then it flew away when it got knocked back by a barrier, said Carlita. I see. Juanita, do you know the best place where someone would go to in order to feel happy? asked Sillin. Actually, I do. I know just the place where Victini is liable to go to. Juanita got up from the stool then turned towards Gollard. Please look after the cart while I'm gone. The Pokemon nodded in affirmation before they left. They were climbing up an uphill path when Naruto decided to ask Juanita more about the barrier and hopefully why it was created. Excuse me, Miss Juanita, but could you tell us about this barrier? asked Naruto. 
Juanita was still surprised about Naruto being able to talk but responded nonetheless, as long as I can remember, our village has an invisible barrier around it, and it is said that Victini can't go beyond the pillar of protection, and they happened to be passing by one as she spoke with Naruto glaring at it. So that's what happened. Ash recalled the incident earlier and felt a bit guilty despite not knowing then. Do you know any reason why the barrier was formed? Asked Naruto, Juanita was about to answer when someone called out to them. Hey everyone. The group looked up to see Damon standing at the top of the path with a mayor man standing next to him. So we meet again. Hey, it's Damon, said Ash with Pikachu, waving at the man. My brother. Carlita ran past, surprising the gang at her statement. Then I'm guessing that Juanita is Damon's mom, said Iris. Well, what do you know, said Sillin. It's been too long, mother, said Damon with a warm smile when Juanita and Carlita reached the top, though the former doesn't look very happy. For your information, six months to be exact, said Juanita with a frown. What brings you back here? asked Carlita. I'm just helping out with the restoration of the castle, said Damon. Upon my special request, said Mans, but he flinched when Juanita turned to glare at him. Look, Mans, your position as mayor does not allow you to boss my son around, said the angered mother. Mans backed away while waving his hands in a placating manner. Whatever you say, my dear Juanita. Hey, it kind of reminds of how pervy Sage would try to avoid Bachan's anger most of times, thought Naruto nostalgically. Damon, Victini actually exists, said Carlita excitedly. Damon simply smiled. Yes, I know, surprising her and the others. Naruto closed his eyes in concentration for a few moments before speaking. Hey guys, I'm sensing Victini nearby. Really? Then lead the way to Kala, said Ash. Naruto nodded before taking the lead with everyone following him. They entered a secluded garden area which Mans revealed to them that it's part of a property belonging to him. They were continuing along the path when they noticed that many Cottony, Petalil, Mancino, and a Purloin and Drillbur were following them too, until they arrived at an area with a small pool where water lily pads were seen floating in it. Victini's aura is getting stronger, which means that it's near, said Naruto. Then where could it be? said Ash. They carefully looked around when they noticed that one of the water lily pads suddenly moved Then Victini appeared sitting on it but then it saw and panicked before turning invisible. Ash ran over to the side of the pool, hoping to call out to it. Victini, wait. I'm really sorry about what happened earlier before. You don't need to hide from us. He's right. We didn't know about the barrier at first, and we'll be careful about it next time, said Naruto. They waited for its response, then they heard it hit a weather vane. You don't need to be afraid of us, Victini. Ash took a step forward towards the edge of the pool, but his foot was placed on a piece which caused him to slip and teeter on the verge of falling in. Ash, be careful. Pikachu rushed over to grab his other foot and pull him back, but he was about to fall in when something grabbed the hood of Ash's jacket before revealing itself to be Victini much to the surprise of those who hadn't seen it yet sans Damon. However, Victini had lost its grip on the hood, and Ash was about to fall in when Naruto appeared in front to hold him up with his tails while standing on water, then helping him regain his balance. Geez, Ash, you gotta be more careful, said Naruto amusedly. Thanks, Naruto, said Ash gratefully with Pikachu feeling the same. Victini flew up to Naruto with a look of amazement and the other wild Pokemon felt the same way. You can walk on water? Yup, that and I can do a lot more. Naruto winked playfully. Wanna see? Yeah, I do, said Victini excitedly. Naruto can do a lot of cool stuff, said Axa cheerfully. Pikachu nodded in agreement. I can vouch for that. Mans, Damon, Carlita, and Juanita smiled as they watched Victini play with Ash and the others along with the wild Pokemon. Victini looks to be having fun with them again, said Carlita happily. Damon looked to be rather serious. My plan is to borrow some of Victini's power. Huh. Carlita and Juanita were a bit confused about what he meant by that statement. Sometime later as the sun began to set, Victini was playing outside in the garden of man's home with Pikachu, Aksu, Scraggy, Cubchu, and a shadow clone of Naruto. Ash along with the rest of the group were in the study room where man's had invited to tell them about their history involving Victini. Snivy had let herself out of the pokeball and was standing next to Naruto. You see, Juanita and I are both descendants of the tribe called the People of the Veil. Mans was currently searching through the bookshelves for a certain book. People of the Veil? asked Ash curiously. It's the tribe mentioned in the castle's legend, Sillin explained. That's correct, said Carlita. We'll tell you all a story, a Victini, and the People of the Veil, said Juanita. Here we go. Mans placed a large dusty volume book on the table. Have a look. Over a thousand years ago, the People of the Veil lived under the rule of a mighty king. He opened the book to reveal that it is a pop-up book type, and they saw a picture of an elderly and Victini. Hey, it's Victini, said Ash. Was it the king's Pokemon? Asked Iris. It certainly looks like it, said Naruto. Yes, that's what the legend says, said Mans, turning to the next page. Mans, Juanita, and Damon went on to explain how the king ruled over the land called the Kingdom of the Veil. Vale. The kingdom used an invisible power which runs through the planet called the Dragon Force to live in perfect harmony with people and Pokemon. The king also had two sons who were twins and princes of the kingdom. 
Each prince possessed a certain quality, and hence was given the moniker as the hero of truth and the hero of ideal. The princes were also accompanied by two great dragon-type Pokemon. The vast white Res Hiram followed the hero of truth, whilst the deep black Zekrom followed the hero of ideal. However, the princes became enemies, and war broke out between them. After a long battle, Res Hiram and Zekrom damaged each other with all their life energy to the point that they transformed into stones and fell into a long, deep slumber. By the time the two princes realized the mistakes of their action, it was too late for the dragon force had turned chaotic and was ravaging the land it once harmonized. The king sought out Victini's help by lending him its power to create a barrier around the castle by using the pillars of protection. He gathered all of the townspeople into the castle as it flew into the air away from the ravaged land and landed on the very mountaintop which the group are standing on right now. However, the king had exhausted all of his energy and died before he could disable the pillars of protection, leaving Victini trapped within. The two princes were full of remorse for everything that had happened including their father's death and so moved the stone forms of the dragon Pokemon to a safe and secret location within the caverns of the castle. And that's how it went according to legends, said Mans while closing the book. But the people of the Vale lost their bond with the land and scattered everywhere, even abandoning Victini who had vanished from sight, said Damon. Victini has been alone all these years, Ash muttered sadly, looking out the door to see Victini flying around Naruto's clone who had just used a hinge to transform into Jiraiya and was doing his introduction and getting the others to laugh, and was trapped in the barrier all this time. Selen was saddened just from the thought of it. That's so sad, said Iris. Naruto gritted his teeth, he was scorned for containing Kurama, and was alone since his birth and Kurama felt the same way as he had been transferred from host to host without being able to taste freedom for even a second. They felt a strange sense of kinship for Victini. Naruto felt someone touch his foreleg and looked to see Snivy gazing at him with concern. Are you okay, Naruto? asked Snivy. I'm okay, Snivy, just thinking about something, said Naruto. My goal is to bring the kingdom of the veil vale back to life, said Damon, turning to smile at Juanita. You said it would be nice if the king of the veil vale could be restored. Yes, I did. Juanita smiled back as she remembered the time when Damon was a child and she had taken him to where the castle used to be. It was there that Damon made a promise to her that he would find a way to restore the kingdom of the Vale back to its former glory. Meanwhile, Ash and the others were playing with Victini, who had taken to them to the lower garden, and was sharing fruits with them and the wild Pokemon. Looks like Victini wasn't entirely alone this whole time, said Silen. I'm glad to see that, said Naruto with a soft smile. Then he saw Victini flying over with two large Pecha Berries in hand. Here, have some, said Victini cheerfully. Thanks, Victini, I appreciate it, said Naruto gratefully, using his tails to hold one. Yes, thank you, Snivy received hers as well with use of her vines. You're welcome. Victini flew off and quickly came back with a berry of his own, before sitting on Naruto's furry tails, which he didn't mind at all, Pikachu, and the others told me that you can change into different types of Pokemon too. That's true. I've got four forms so far with more to unlock, said Naruto. Victini became curious at that. Which are they? There's the polymorph form which is my default form in a normal type, the aqua mode that is a water type, combo mode a fighting type, and Raiden mode being an electric type. Wow, then you must be super strong, said Victini and all. Well that's because I train hard alongside Pikachu and the others. Naruto smiled at Victini's admiration, recalling how Kanoa Maru and his friends would act that way around him. Well he certainly does help us a lot with our training too, said Snivy with a soft smile. So what kind of battle did you and Ash take part in? asked Victini excitedly. Well, my first official Pokemon began back at Luxuria Town against a trainer by the name Trip. Naruto proceeded to tell Victini of his and the others' battles. Soon the wild Pokemon gathered round to listen to him too. Later that night, Juanita, Carlita, Mans, and Damon were in the study and having a discussion about what he had been talking about earlier. Three years ago, Damon returned and paid me a visit at my home. He spoke of how he wanted to reunite the people of Vale as one like in the past. I was rather skeptical, but he was determined to go through with it, so I eventually agreed, said Mans. Damon nodded in affirmation since that time. I had journeyed far and wide in search of the people of the Vale. However, any attempts I made were rebuffed as they saw it as nothing more than legends that they wouldn't even listen to me, but I wasn't willing to give up just yet. Then one night, I heard a voice and it was coming from the sore of the Vale. From the castle? Asked Juanita and received a nod in response. That's right, so we went to the cave located beneath the castle. The strange thing was that no matter which we took, we weren't descending, but Damon was able to. That was when we realized that the path chooses the one it allows to pass, and it chose Damon, said Mance. So I went alone and the path was full of obstacles, but I eventually arrived at the bottom, and it was there I met the source of the voice. I met Zekrom, said Damon, surprising Carlita and Juanita. You met Zekrom? That's amazing, said Carlita. Yes, and it was with Zekrom's help that I finally able to persuade the chieftains of the scattered villages to rejoin and come together to help rebuild the kingdom of the Vale. Knock, knock. Mance called for the person to come in, 
The door opened to reveal the leaders of the villages along with their children entering the room much to the Carlita and Juanita, realizing that they're the ones now supporting Damon's dream. Damon got up from his seat and strode toward a 3D model of the Kingdom of the Veil, and I have found the answer. Zekerman showed me how the people of the Veil can use the Sword of the Veil to gain complete control of the Dragon Force's energy. He took hold of the castle and pulled it out to imply the meaning of his words. Back with Ash and the gang, they were fast asleep underneath a tree as Iris and Aksu slept atop a tree branch. Silen was at the foot in a sleeping bag. Ash leaned against the tree trunk with Pikachu and Naruto on either side while Victini slept on his lap with Naruto's tails placed on him like a cover. Victini was having a dream. He dreamt of the time of the force field trapping him and sees before his eyes the many centuries passing, seasons changing rapidly and a town springing up on the mountain below the castle's new location. At the end, the king appeared in a golden ethereal form before Victini with a look of regret. I'm sorry, Victini. Please forgive me for trapping you here. I'm so sorry. Then he began to fade away. Wait. Please don't go. Come back. Victini cried out desperately, but the king had disappeared, leaving him behind to cry in loneliness. Naruto's eyes suddenly snapped open as he woke up from his slumber, and Ash had woken up too. What was that dream I just saw? Asked Ash confusedly. You too. I think we saw some sort of memory from Victini's dream, said Naruto. Both looked to see Victini still sleeping, but was clenching one of Naruto's tails tightly. Poor Victini, Ash petting his head softly. So you really were alone, weren't you? I'm sure even now, the king blames himself for not being able to disable the barrier before he died, said Naruto sadly. Victini then woke up and started fluttering around much to their confusion, but it seems like Victini wanted them to follow him somewhere. What's the matter, Victini? asked Naruto. Come on, there's something I want to show you, said Victini before flying away. Ash, Naruto, and an awoken Pikachu ran after the victory Pokemon, whilst Iris and Silen also woke up and followed after them. They stopped at the ledge of the castle where they could see the ocean from the distance. They watched as the sun gradually rose from the horizon and graced them with an amazing sight much to their awe. Then Victini began acting excited again as he gestured to the ocean. Ash then caught on to what Victini is trying to say. Victini, do you want to go to the ocean? That's right, I've always dreamed of going there, said Victini with Naruto translating for him. Then let's go there, I promise to find a way to take you to the ocean, said Ash. Same here, I'll do anything I can to help too. That's a promise of a lifetime, said Naruto, determinately with Kurama grunting in agreement. Even if it would involve destroying those damn pillars to do so. Really? Thank you. Victini happily went to hug Ash first then Naruto. However, none of the group would expect the disaster, which was coming their way, and the eventual clash between the truth and the ideal. Over at the castle, Damon along with Carlita and Juanita watching and supporting him as he strode to the center and call out his Pokemon Sigilyph from its Pokeball to fly to the pedestal of the castle's internal mechanisms before walking towards what seems to be an ancient control panel and held his hands over it. From this day forward, the people of the Vale will be reunited with the land. Sigilyph. Damon proclaimed as the Pokemon began glowing with psychic energy, causing four smaller pillars similar to the ones around the castle to activate and hover in the air, which in turn activated the control panel for Damon to begin manipulating it to summon the pillars of protection. Back with Ash and the group, they heard a sound and turned to see that the runes on the pillars suddenly light up and begin rising from the ground into the air much to their confusion. Naruto and Ash took note of Victini flying close to them in fear of them. What's going on with them? asked Ash confusedly. I have no idea, this is most strange, said Silen. I'm getting the feeling that someone's controlling them, said Naruto with narrowed eyes at what's going on. He's picking up large amounts of psychic energy being used at the castle. There's something going on at the castle, Naruto. Best we head over there and find out, said Kurama, getting a nod of agreement from his partner. Victini, wait. Naruto snapped back to attention upon hearing Ash's voice and looked to see Victini fly away from them in fear to get away from the force field. Come on guys, we gotta go after him. He'll be heading for the castle, so let's go there quickly, said Naruto. He took the lead with the others following after him as fast as they could. So it's begun. Mans along with the tribal leaders were watching the pillars hover in the air and converge towards the castle from his home. He looked down and saw Ash and the group following Victini with a bit of curiosity. I guess they want to see what's going to happen over at the castle too. Meanwhile, the pillars have reached the gathering point which is at the top with Victini doing his best to stay ahead of them and went inside with Juanita and Carlita taking notice and wondered why while the group finally made their way inside as well before climbing up the stairs to get to the top where hopefully, they would finally get some answers to the many questions in their minds. Victini looked around for a place to get away from the pillars when he heard a voice call out to him. Victini? The Pokemon looked at the figure and saw it to be none other than his dear friend the king, and so flew over to give him a hug. I ask that you grant me your power. However, when he drew closer, Victini saw that it wasn't the king but Damon instead. You're not the king. However, the four smaller pillars quickly surrounded Victini and tried to break out of it, but the force field held him in place then moved him towards the topmost pedestal, 
The sigilif above triggered the mechanism, and Victini felt his power being forcefully drained out of him. Stop it. But Damon didn't seem to listen. The energy transfers through the structure, and awakening the many solosis to use their psychic power. Damon. Juanita called out in concern of what's currently happening. It was at that moment that Ash and the gang had finally showed up to stand next to her and Carlita. Victini's power is increasing the psychic type Pokemon strength in a castle. Take a look. Damon responded before manning the control panel once more. Carlita, where's Vidash? Ash was about to ask when the castle suddenly shook and for some strange reason seems to be moving. What was that? The castle. Iris pointed out for the others to see. They all looked down and were surprised to see the castle actually lifting up from the ground and flying into the air. Naruto took note of a green aura leaking out from where the castle once was and felt a sense of serenity from it. Then he heard Damon call out to them again. I'm using the castle to change the flow of the Dragon Force, said Damon. Dragon Force? But I thought that energy had turned chaotic and that it was sealed away by the king, thought Naruto confusedly. My thoughts exactly, but it doesn't seem to be doing any harm from the looks of it, said Kurama. They watched as the energy from the Dragon Force flowed through the land and continued to spread, making water flow and nature quickly grow in the barren lands. So far everything seems to be going according to Damon's plan, but the White Fox can't help but feel uneasy about all this though. We're on our way. Damon gazed on the land with eyes of determination. The Kingdom of the Vale will be renewed when the castle is returned. Stop it. Victini cried out in pain, something that Naruto and Ash quickly caught onto and ran over to where their friend is only to be filled with worry as the sight of his current state. Damon, what's going on here? Naruto demanded sensing Victini's power being forcefully taken and could sense his pain. Victini is lending its power to me, Damon replied. You're hurting Victini by taking his power by force. You gotta let him go. Ash protested against this with the others agreeing with him. Stop this. Pikachu was in agreement. Damon refused, however. I won't. Not while I still need its power. Naruto growled in anger at his response. So you're willing to hurt Victini because of this? Then we're just going to have to break Victini out of there ourselves. He ran towards the pedestal with Ash and Pikachu being quick to follow him as they began to climb up to where Victini is being held. Damon threw a poke ball to call on his Gothitelle who used confusion to grab Ash and the others then restrained him Adair. Juanita and Carlita appeared and were shocked at what was happening and immediately understood the circumstance of the situation before calling out to Damon. Brother, please stop this or Victini will die, Carlita pleaded. Please stop this now, said Juanita. But mother, Damon was surprised to hear her say that as he was doing all this to honor the promise he made to her. Now Pikachu used Thunderbolt. Ash grunted out. Pikachu immediately complied and launched a blast of electricity to hit Gothitelle, which caused the Pokemon to cancel its psychic attack and release them. Now use Electro Ball and Tokala you use Return to destroy those pillars. Got it. Naruto emitted a white aura from his body before opening his mouth to fire a large white energy beam, while Pikachu launched a yellow sphere of electricity. Both projectiles were about to collide with the pillars when a blast of purple flames intercepted to prevent them from striking much to their surprise. What the? They heard a roar and turned to see a large black bipedal Pokemon flying outside before moving to land next to Damon and opposed the group. Who's that Pokemon? Pikachu's eyes widened in recognition and trepidation with the same going for Ash, and the others with Carlita being audible about it, it's Zekrom. You mean the one you and Ash meet when you first arrived to Unova? Asked Naruto. The very same one, said Pikachu. Zekrom's tail lit up with blue light as it gazed intently with blue bolts of electricity coming off it. I shall not allow you to impede his ideals. It let out a roar with such power that the shockwave from it pushed them back. I definitely wasn't expecting to battle a legendary when I woke up this morning, said Naruto. Me too, said Pikachu. Juanita threw a poke ball to call on her shiny Gallark before her Gallark stopped Zekrom. Gallark retracted its hands into its arms, then the legs and feet into its body, before expelling blue energy to propel itself like rocket to tackle Zekrom and driving it out of the castle into the sky. Zekrom raised its head and gathered purple energy to form a ball of light blue energy on its forehead before bringing it down to knock Gallark back. The Pokemon attempted to recover, but Zekrom rammed into it and unleashed a point-blank dragon pulse to send and plummeting through the cloud bank. That's no good, Zekrom's too strong, said Sillin. Guys, watch out. Naruto called out in alert. They turned round to see Gothitelle hovering before them. Gothitelle used confusion. Damon commanded. Gothitelle immediately restrained them with psychic energy once more. Pikachu, quick, use Thunderbolt. Ash called out. Pikachu was about to do so, but Gothitelle wasn't going to allow that to happen for the second as she tightened her hold on Ash, Pikachu, and Naruto, making them slowly lose conscious. Got a break free. Naruto disappeared in a puff of smoke to reveal a wooden log in his place. Gothitelle was slammed to the side courtesy of Naruto, having used extreme speed to attack then glanced to the side to see that Ash and Pikachu were knocked out much to his anger before facing Damon. If you're not going to stop this nonsense, 
then I'll just have to make you stop. He dashed towards Damon when he leapt away to avoid a dragon pulse from Zekrum who had returned. Oh well, guess I have no choice but to go. Through you. Shadow clone. Naruto created copies of himself, and they all charge at Zekrum while using Crush Claw. The deep black Pokemon opened its mouth to launch a Dragon Pulse to take out a majority of the clones, but Naruto triggered extreme speed to dodge and was soon before Zekrum and used return in the form of an energy beam to damage it. Zekrum retaliated with a Zen headbutt to knock him away, but Naruto had avoided it with substitution before switching of combo mode. Not done yet, he studied Zekrum closely and saw that he was about to use an attack then counter by using Mach Punch to strike first before following it up with Sky Uppercut. However, it left him open to being struck by Zen Head but which was powerful enough to forcefully revert him to his polymorph form and skidding to the ground. Bad news, you can't use that form anymore in this battle since you have been hit with its opposite typing, said Kurama with a frown. Darn it, was planning on using Work Up a couple times to match up. My other forms won't do much here either. Naruto snapped back into focus and saw Zekrom about to use Dragon Pulse once more, and so quickly formed a Rasengan on his paw then used extreme speed for quick acceleration. Zekrom launched a power full of Dragon Energy, while Naruto thrust his attack to hit back, and was gradually pushing through, before hitting the Legendary to knocking it back a few feet. Naruto, look out behind you! Iris called out, but the warning came too late as Naruto got hit from behind and sent flying forward to tumble to the floor. He raised his head to look behind and saw that it was Gothitelle who had attacked him. Sorry, but I cannot allow you to get in my way of fulfilling my mother's dream. Gothitel used energy ball. Damon commanded. Gothitel launched a green energy sphere to strike Naruto, which was enough to make him faint. Unknown to many below the cloud bank on the ground, the dragon force changed color from green to purple and began draining life from nature with plant like shriveling away, which caused the Pokemon to flee in distress. Victini was able to sense this despite being in pain and knew that he had to do something to stop it, but what? It was then he had an idea and swung into action with hope that his friends would help. Ash opened his eyes and found himself floating in the air. Where am I? He looked around and saw that the castle was descending towards a mountain where the corrupted dragon force was flowing sealed it away. He found himself inside the castle where he saw the king weakly leaning against the wall with Victini before. Could this be another of Victini's memories? Ash noticed the king speaking and listened closely. The sword of the veil must not be moved. If the sword of the veil is moved once more... The dragon force will be disturbed and that could destroy our entire world, which means that the castle must never be moved again. The king caressed Victini's cheek for the last time, before breathing his last and passing away. Upon hearing those words, Ash realized that this part of history was unknown to the people of the Vale, and that Damon has made a big mistake in moving the castle. He needs to alert the others so that they can stop him before it's too late. Ash opened his eyes to himself awake, and the others were relieved to see that he was doing okay. He glanced to the side to see Naruto also waking up after having been treated by Silen from the damage of his earlier battle. We're so glad that you two are okay, said Iris. Where are we? Asked Ash confusedly. In the castle storeroom, Silen replied. Ash, please forgive me. Juanita bowed her head in apology with Carlita doing the same. Forgive my brother, said Carlita. Ash then recalled the vision he had while asleep and got to his feet. He shouldn't have moved the castle. If the castle's moved... The dragon force will be disturbed and will destroy the world. Everyone was in shock at what he just told them sans Naruto. What did you say? Asked Juanita. Victini just told me, so in a dream, the castle was moved to the top of the mountain to keep the disturbance of the dragon force from getting out of control. That explains why I'm feeling so much chaos from the land below us, and I'm not even in my Natura mode to sense it, said Naruto spoke up. This is more serious than we thought, said Kurama. But it can't be... Carlita was finding it hard to believe, but Juanita looked rather thoughtful. According to legend, the dragon force became disturbed after Zekrom turned to stone, which means Zekrom doesn't know, said Juanita. So what should we do? asked Sillin. Yeah, Zekrom's too strong, said Iris worriedly. Understatement of the day, Naruto grumbled, still feeling a bit of pain from the battle. Juanita thought deeply again. Res Hiram. Res Hiram, you mean the other legendary dragon Pokemon? asked Ash and got a nod of affirmation. Res Hiram has the power to match up against Zekrom, Carlita pointed out. So where's Res Hiram then? asked Ash. Zekrom was beneath the castle. That's where Damon found it. Then that means Res Hiram must be nearby as well, said Juanita. Beneath the castle, you say? Ash, do you think that it's where we were before after rescuing the deerling? asked Naruto, thoughtfully. That's gotta be it. Ash approached the wall and pushed it to rotate sideways and reveal an underground passageway much to the surprise of the others. Come on, we gotta go find Res Hiram. The group began making their way through the passage at Reach where the area with giant crystalline rocks is located and proceeded to move downwards to the bottom of the cave, but it seems like they weren't getting any closer like they thought they would. Just how far does this path go? Asked Iris confusedly. It feels like we keep going around in circles, said Sillin. Hold on, where's Ash and Tokala? Like Carlita said, 
The two were nowhere to be seen, which confused the group as they were just in front of them. Hey, you guys. They heard Ash's voice and looked only to be surprised that he, Naruto, and Pikachu were below them. Come down here. But how did you three get down there? Asked Silling. Beats us. We just found our way down here. Hold on. I remember man's telling us how the path chooses the one it allows to pass, and it chose Damon before. Now it's choosing Ash, said Carlita. In that case, we'll be going on ahead, said Naruto, before running down the path with Ash and Pikachu following after him. Be sure to find Rez Hiram. Iris called after them. We will. Ash replied. You can count on us, said Pikachu. Ash, we gotta hurry. Victini doesn't have much time left, said Naruto urgently. I know we need to help him. The trio continued running down the path when suddenly a ripple of energy which rose from the bottom of the cave to the top whilst illuminating the area, like before then, they heard a voice in their minds. Do you possess the courage to seek the truth? What was that? Ash asked in confusion. Suddenly the path around them began to crumble. Do. Naruto. We need to keep moving. No need to tell us twice, let's go. Naruto picked Pikachu up with his tail and placed him on his back before they began running down the crumbling path and leaping over gaps in their hastening descent. They had a few close calls along the way, but were able to finally arrive at the bottom of the castle we made here in one piece. Now to find Rez Hiram and get his help. But where is Rez Hiram? Ash looked around for said Pokemon. Suddenly there was a surge of fiery energy nearby, and the trio turned to see a floating stone scorched red with flames radiating before them, and the same voice from before spoke once more. What is your wish? Your truth, asked the voice. That must be Rez Hiram in its dormant state, said Karama with Naruto nodding in agreement. Ash thought back to the fun times he and the others had along with Victini. My truth, I really want to help Victini. I gotta help. Victini lived here all alone for a thousand years. Lonely, he must have been so lonely. I promised that I would take Victini to the ocean. And Ash isn't the only one who wishes for that. We do as well because Victini is our friend. And one doesn't even need a reason to help out a friend said Naruto with eyes full of determination. Yeah, we all want to help Victini, said Pikachu. The stone began to shine more brightly than before, which caused Ash and the others to shield their eyes from the brightness to avoid getting blinded until the brightness dimmed enough for them to look. Before the trio is a white-colored, bipedal Pokemon with draconic, avian, and mammalian traits. A long, voluminous, wispy mane streams out from the upper side of the snout and outwards from its head. The top of this mane is adorned with two protrusions which resemble ears, its face is fringed with spiky features, and it has a small pointed extension below the chin. Its eyes have blue irises and black pupils. Rez Hiram had a long and slender neck with a fluffy collar-like protrusion, jutting out of two gray, glass-like neckbands. Its arms begin slender and arm-like, but then flare out into a more wing-like appearance, sporting four claws which resemble hands on the leading edge. There are plates at the back of Rez Hiram's hands that sport a similar color to its neck rings. It has a feathered or furry feature on its chest with the lower portion protruding outwards to a point. Long feather-like protrusions jet out of its thighs. On its feet are large gray claws, three at the front and one positioned at the back, resembling high heels. Rishiram's tail is a mass of plume and ribbon-like extensions, surrounded by two large bands, similar to the ones around its neck. The draconic Pokemon gazed at them before speaking once more. It is your courage that shall become your truth, and I shall aid you in your affirmation of the truth, said Rishiram. Ash was momentarily surprised, but regained his determination once more. Meanwhile, the others found their way to the upper courtyard and tried to look out for Ash with hopes that he was successful in finding Rez Hiram, but they also saw Zekrom flying nearby as well. Silen looked down below and noticed something disturbing before calling out to the others. Juanita, look through the clouds, said Silen. They peered through a gap in the cloud banks to see the dragon force ravaging the lands just like what Ash alerted them about. Oh no, we need to stop Damon before it gets any worse, said Carlita. Then they heard a sound of rotors spinning as a red helicopter ascended from below to hover before them, and piloting it was Mance. Things are looking really bad down there, said Mance. The dragon force has gone out of control, said Juanita. How did you know? It was what Ash told us about from Victini, Carlita explained further. At that moment Juanita's Gallark reappeared after recovering from its brief battle with Zegram. Gallark, you need to stop the castle, said Juanita. The Pokemon nodded in affirmation and quickly flew up to where Damon was controlling the castle then prepared to launch a hyper beam. Zekrom, don't let it get in my way, said Damon. Zekrom swooped down from above to intercept with Zen head but to knock Gallark away from the castle. Gallark, I know you can do this, Juanita called out. Mans had the helicopter land on the courtyard. Everyone, get on. He waited until they were on board before taking to the skies once more. Gallark recovered in midair before propelling itself towards Zekrom and clashing in the middle, but the black dragon Pokemon used Zen head but once again to attack it. Gallark attacked once more with Euro Ball and landed a hit, but it wasn't effective enough before being blasted by Zekrom's Dragon Pulse to be sent crashing into the castle's courtyard and lay there in a weakened state. Zekrom prepared another Dragon Pulse to knock it out. 
Gollert, get out of there. Juanita called out in worry. It's too late, said Mance. Zekrom launched its attack, which drew close to the motionless Pokemon with everyone watching helplessly, when suddenly a large fireball surrounded by two rings of flames intercepted the attack and exploded, saving Gollert much to the surprise of everyone. The black smoke cleared away to reveal a Pokemon, whom they immediately recognized along with the ones riding on its back. It's Ash. Iris called out happily. And he found Rez Hiram too. Cillin was just as relieved. Rez Hiram. Damon was surprised to see the second Pokemon of legend. Zekrom let out a roar as the electric generator within its tail start to spin and glow light blue, then clenches its fists, and its body emits yellow electricity with lightning bolts coming off it before flying straight at Rez Hiram and Ash in an attempt to ram them with bolt strike. Rez Hiram was quick to avoid the attack and flew away from Zekrom to come around and launch an attack by firing a powerful stream of light blue flames from its mouth to strike its counterpart. Rez Hiram, we need you to drop us off at the castle so we can save Victini, said Ash. Heads up, Zekrom's on our tail. Naruto called out in alert. Rez Hiram quickly ascended to evade a dragon pulse from behind before diving into the cloud bank to make Zekrom lose sight of it before rising up to the castle and closed in on it. Rez Hiram made it inside for Ash and the others to drop off, but Zekrom came swooping in and tackling it out of the castle to resume the battle. Hang on, Victini, we're coming. Ash began to approach where Victini is being held, but were intercepted by Gothitelle. Naruto glared at the sight of it. You again? I've been wanting to pay you back for that cheap shot earlier, said Naruto with a growl. Tokala, use extreme speed. Ash commanded. Naruto's body became surrounded by a white and clear aura as he took off at high speed and slammed into Gothitelle before using substitution to avoid the confusion attack. Now use Crush Claw. Naruto unsheathed his claws which glowed white before lunging forward and striking Gothitelle once more for greater damage. Outside, Rez Hiram was battling Zekrom as it used Dragon Breath to attack it. Zekrom retaliated with its signature move Fusion Bolt as its tail glowed light blue once more with energy, then its body became surrounded in a sphere of violet electricity before slamming into Rez Hiram to trigger an electrical explosion upon collision. Rez Hiram retaliated with its own signature move Fusion Flare as it opened its mouth to form a large sphere of fire with two rings of flame surrounding it before launching the fiery projectile to strike Zekrom, which also triggered a violent explosion. Zekrom was sent plummeting to the ground below in a barely conscious state with Rez Hiram diving after it, and quickly saved Zekrom, which it fell into the Dragon Force. What is this? How come the Dragon Force is full of chaos? Asked Zekrom in shock as it watches the trees and plants being drained of life. The aftermath of the battle years ago was the cause of this, which was why the belated king sealed it away to prevent further destruction, Rez Hiram explained. Then we must cease this fight and help stop this chaos from occurring further. Back at the castle, Ash and Naruto were still battling Gothitelle, and were gaining an edge over it with Damon, witnessing all this with a frown. Tokala used quick attack said Ash Naruto in his riding mode dashed at Gothitelle at high speed with white energy trailing behind him and slammed into the psychic Pokemon then quickly jumped back to avoid an energy ball fired in retaliation hang tough. Sometimes in the search for ideals, sacrifices must be made, said Damon. My ideals don't need sacrifice, Ash replied in refusal to his views. I highly doubt that your future generations will be proud of such a legacy left behind, an ideal which involves purposeful sacrifice is an ideal never to be acknowledged said Naruto with a frown. He had encountered many with such ideals and stopped them before they accomplished it, so he's going to do the same here. Tokala dodge and then use lightning arrow. Ash commanded. Naruto jumped sideways to avoid a sidebeam attack from Gothitelle. Naruto roared as his stripes glowed with yellow electricity, concentrated on his back and took on the shape of a bow. He then used his prehensile tail to pull back on the bowstring to conjure a lightning bolt fire. He let it loose as the projectile shot forward and struck Gothitelle, making it faint for Damon to have no choice but to recall it with his pokeball. Now let's go save Victini. Ash climbed up to the pedestal with Naruto and Pikachu following until they reached the top. Naruto immediately used Metal Claw and Pikachu used Iron Tail of the Pillars, but the barrier defended against both attacks. Keep trying, we got a breakthrough. Naruto, we got company, said Kurama in alert. They looked to see Zekrom arrive before them. Zekrom, stop those three. Damon commanded. They tensed for an attack, but Zekrom didn't make a move much to their surprise. What's the matter? Naruto seized the opportunity to revert to his polymorph form and strike at the barrier once more with a Rasengan, with the spiraling sphere grinding against the barrier. It was then that Zekrom used Dragon Pulse at the barrier as well with both attacks shattering it and stopping the energy drain too. Ash rushed forward to catch Victini before he fell to the ground. Victini, are you okay? Asked Ash worriedly. Victini turned a smile tiredly at them. I'm okay. Thank you. No need for thanks, just helping a friend out, said Naruto with a foxy grin. Thank goodness, said Pikachu in relief. Soon Rez Hiram appeared in the castle chamber, with Mans landing the helicopter nearby for the others to disembark. Why, Zekrom? Why didn't you stop them? 
Damon demanded. Everything was going according to plan, so why do all this? I can hear the land's anger, Zikram replied. Damon was rather confused at the answer, anger. Then he turned to see Mans and the others run up to him in a panic. Damon, the veil is in deep trouble, said Juanita. The dragon force is out of control, Mans added. What? Damon ran to the edge of the castle with everyone following while Zikram and Rezhiram flew out. Then they used Dragon Pulse and Dragon Breath, respectively, to make and clouds part and reveal the dragon force ravaging the land and killing all plant life. Damon looked at the scenery in horror. This wasn't what he wanted. Not at all. How could this have happened? All I wanted to do was fulfill my mother's dream. How could it be so wrong? Damon, isn't there any way to calm the dragon force? Asked Carlita. Damon gritted his teeth in frustration. I don't know. I just don't know. We need to come up with a solution and fast, said Naruto. Then the two dragon Pokemon flew up to them. You must soothe the anger of the land, said Zikram. Rizhiram spoke next. Use the sword. Damon's eyes widened in realization at what they're implying. That's it. The sword of the veil will once again restrain the dragon force. He looked up to the dragon Pokemon Zikram. Rezhiram, please lend me your power. Both roared in affirmation of his request. Suddenly, the dragon force surged and shot up towards the castle. Zikram and Rezhiram attempted to intercept it, but were knocked out of the way as it wound around the castle ad spread its corrupted energy through it. What's going on? asked Gash. The dragon force seemed to have reversed on itself, said Mance. It's almost as if it knew what we were planning to do and is trying to stop us, said Naruto with a frown. Mans, you need to get everyone out of here as the castle's starting to crumble, said Damon. Right, everyone, let's head back to the helicopter, said Mans before leading the way with everyone following him to the courtyard. Carlita called over Hydreigon for her and Iris to ride on while the rest sat in the helicopter. However, Damon remained behind much to their confusion. Damon, come on, said Juanita. You go on ahead, said Damon. Are you planning on staying on the castle? Asked Naruto. You all need to get off while I take care of the rest. Ash protested against this. But Damon, this is something I need to do on my own. So go now. Ash, Naruto, hurry up. Silen called out as the helicopter began to take off. Ash and Naruto began climbing the stairs and approached the helicopter when the former suddenly got knocked away by the barrier. Oh no, the barrier is still active. Darn it, completely forgotten about those pillars. Naruto growled as he looked up to see the pillars begin to gather closely and reduce the space within the barrier to knock Ash away again. And they went to check up on him. You okay, buddy? Yeah, but Victini can't get past the barrier, Ash replied. The barrier is closing in, said Damon. Do you have any idea for us to get Victini past the barrier? Asked Naruto. Damon was about to answer when the entire castle tilted to the side and they were sliding towards the edge. Naruto channeled Chakra to his feet and ran over to grab Ash and Pikachu with his tails to hold him in place, but couldn't reach Damon in time as he fell off the castle Damon. Things got worse from there as the castle began rising to the sky with great speed and was ascending to the atmosphere. The Sigilyph and the Solosis flew out of the castle in a great panic while Ash and others were beginning to find it very hard to breath and the temperature was dropping quickly for Frost to appear from their body. It's so cold, pretty soon, we're gonna run out of air, Ash shivered as he spoke. We gotta do something, but what? Naruto was also feeling the cold as well with his mind racing for a solution. They heard the familiar cries of Rezhiram and Zekrom, looking up to see the dragon Pokemon along with Galark and Damon, whom they relieved to see Damon. Are we glad to see you? Hang in there. All right, destroy the pillars of protection so we can release all of the energy, said Damon. Zekrom used Fusion Bolt to strike the pillars and Rezhiram followed it up with Fusion Flare, but both attacks weren't having as much effect as they should. Ash and Naruto backed away from the approaching barrier and pushed to the courtyard with the pillars closing in on them. Naruto and Pikachu used Return and Thunderbolt at the pillars, but they continued to approach and soon enough were boxed in with no way out. We gotta get out of here, Rasengan. Naruto rammed the spiraling sphere into one of the pillars but was knocked back and zapped by the barrier. It's getting really hard to breathe. He heard a thump and turned to see Ash on his knees and panning heavily. Hang in there, we'll get through this. Please, Ash, Pikachu and Victini were just as worried about him. He's right, Ash. You can't give up. Because you've been chosen by the great dragon Pokemon. So hang on, we'll get you out. Said Damon, Rezhiram and Zekrom were using all of their attacks on the pillars to get them out as fast as they could. No way. Am I giving up here? Ash grunted out as he struggled back to his feet. We're not giving up either. Naruto created shadow clones and had them attack the pillars from within with Pikachu joining in with Thunderbolt. Naruto, I'm preparing my chakra at a certain amount that your body can currently handle so that you can destroy this barrier in one go, said Kurama. Please hurry, we're running on borrowed time now, thought Naruto as he watched Ash collapse to the ground and ran over to check on him. Ash, please hold on for a bit longer. I can't move. My body won't let me, Ash barely muttered out. Stay with me, Ash. Don't go to sleep. It's all over if you do. I'm sorry. I know we promised you that we would take you to the ocean. I'm really sorry. 
Naruto's eyes and realization of what's going on. Those better not be your last words, Ash. Because I won't be happy with you if they are. Please stay awake, Ash. Pikachu pleaded, having seen his trainer in many situations like this. His death at the Tree of Life really broke the Lightning Mouse and doesn't want to experience something like that ever again. I'm sending the chakra now. Karama called out. Naruto's body began emitting a vermilion red aura with such force and heat that it warmed Ash up to prevent freezing. Then he looked up at the pillars with anger in his eyes. You have outlived your usefulness a long time ago and became shackles to hold down a good friend. Putting the lives of my friends in danger is the final straw. It's time for you to go and stay gone. Naruto began channeling the chakra to form a Rasengan as it grew to the size of a beach ball. He was about to attack when he felt a paw on his and looked down to see Victini stare back with eyes of determination. Victini, I'm helping too, so we can save Ash. Victini began channeling his energy into Naruto, increasing his power to the point of influencing the Rasengan, which changed color to orange with a red letter V inside of it. Victini clung to Naruto's back. Let's do it, Naruto. Naruto nodded an affirmation, right? He crouched low, then leapt towards the upper part of the pillars. Get out of our sight. Victorious Rasengan. He rammed a collaboration technique into the pillars. The barrier attempted to deflect the attack, but was quickly losing to its overwhelming power as Naruto and Victini yelled out while unleashing their full power to the maximum in a massive burst of energy to shatter the barrier and destroy the pillars which spread far and wide in the atmosphere with a corrupted dragon force being expelled into space. Damon watched in awe at the sight of the power displayed while Zekrom and Rez Hiram looked on with eyes of interest. Naruto and Victini landed back on the ground next to Ash and Pikachu looking severely fatigued but smiled wearily. We did it, said Naruto. Victini nodded in agreement, yeah. They both collapsed to the floor and lose conscious though they barely heard Ash and Pikachu calling out to them before completely blacking out. Sometime later, Damon had gotten back on the castle to retake control of it with the help of Rez Hiram, Zekrom and Galark pushing it back down to earth as the solo sis and Sigilyph returning to assist in the movement. Ash and Pikachu were currently tending to Naruto and Victini, who were wrapped up in a blanket and currently asleep. Then Iris and Carlita came flying in on Hydreigon. Ash, are you all okay? Asked Iris worriedly. We're okay, Naruto and Victini are just tired, said Ash. Carlita went to check on her brother Damon. Are you alright? She received a nod of affirmation in response. The leading edge of the dragon force is just up ahead, said Mans while piloting the helicopter to serve as a navigator for Damon. Is that where the castle goes? Asked Carlita. Yes, exactly. It's the only way to calm down the chaotic dragon force, said Damon. You got one shot at this Damon, said Juanita from the helicopter. Damon carefully guided the castle towards the top of the cliff, close to the seaside where the edge of the dragon force currently. Then with the right timing, had the castle land upon the corrupted energy and embedded deep into the ground. Everyone could have sworn that they heard the dragon force roar before the chaotic purple color changed to a soothing green then faded away. You did it, Damon. Ash cheered happily with Pikachu following suit. Now the land of the will be safe, said Carlita. They heard a groan and looked back to see Naruto getting up to his feet and looked around in confusion before turning towards the group. Did I miss something interesting? Naruto, you're okay. Ash and Pikachu went to give Naruto a hug with Naruto returning it with a smile. You had us so worried when you and Victini collapsed. You really had us worried, said Pikachu. Sorry about that. We just wanted to get rid of those pillars and save you too, said Naruto sheepishly. But what about Victini? Is it okay? Asked Carlita, looking at said Pokemon with concern. Victini is okay, and we'll be waking up soon. Naruto heard sound of water, and then got an idea. This also gives us the chance to keep our promise too. Right, Ash? Ash caught on to what Naruto is saying and smiled as well. Yeah, let's do it. What's he talking about? Asked Carlita. Naruto and Ash promised to take Victini to the ocean, Iris explained. And now that the pillars of protection are gone, they can do just that, Sillin added, getting nods of understanding from the others. Victini opened his eyes and looked up to notice that he was wrapped in something fuzzy before recognizing them to be Naruto's tails with the fox looking back at him with a foxy grin and spoke up. It's about time you woke up sleepyhead, said Naruto. Yeah, we got a surprise for you, Ash chimed in. Naruto, Ash? What do you mean, surprise? Victini's ears picked up the sounds of waves crashing against the shore and looked past the duo to see the ocean right in front of him. It's the ocean, but how? It dawned upon him that he helped Naruto destroy the pillars which means that he's now free to go wherever he wants now. Just like we promised, we brought you to the ocean and you can come here anytime you want, said Ash and he was hugged by a happy Victini who also went to hug Naruto too. Then they saw a vision of Victini restoring life to the barren lands with both people and Pokemon living together peacefully on them. I get it, you're going head back to the Vale, aren't you? To make the place beautiful and peaceful just like when you were with the king, right? Asked Naruto with a sad smile. Victini had really grown him as he felt the same attachment with Konomaru. Victini nodded in affirmation and gave them a victory sign, that's right. Then go and make everyone happy, said Ash. 
Everyone watched happily at all this except for Damon, who felt guilty for everything that had happened. He almost destroyed the world in his attempt to fulfill the promise made to his mother, falling to his knees with feelings of regret. Damon, what's wrong? asked Carlita in concern. Everyone, please forgive me, said Damon. He heard footsteps and looked up to see Naruto staring back at him. We can't really be made at you. Your reasons are noble, but you just went about it the wrong way. Hopefully next time, you would turn to others to help you restore the land of the veil just like you wanted, but in the right way said Naruto with a look of understanding. He remembered how Nagato tried to bring peace to the elemental nations which involved the loss of many innocent lives including Jiraiya until he put a stop to it and convinced to do otherwise. He's right. Juanita helped Damon back to his feet and patted his back with a motherly smile. Let's work together to restore the connection with the land and the people of the Vale and we'll do it the right way. Yes, mother. Damon responded with a small smile. A few days later, Ash and the group began to depart for Nimbasa City in hopes for the bridge to be fully repaired. Zikram and Rez Hiram had long since departed for destinations unknown to the others, though Naruto noticed that they had been staring at him a couple of times, and even heard them whisper something about being a bearer of both ideals and truth before they left. Victini was sad to see that his new friends would be going soon, but then had an idea and called Naruto over to talk about it. The White Fox was at first surprised, but then wholeheartedly agreed to it. Soon the group were well on their way after saying goodbye to Damon and the others and gave their best wishes before finally leaving. That was quite the detour we had, eh, Karama? Asked Naruto. Indeed makes me look forward to what else we would encounter in the near future as well. I'll love to see how we would contend with legendaries in the future after some training. I'm getting shivers at the thought of it, said Karama with a smirk. Me too, buddy, me too. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.